So what are we doing in the economics of gender? We are taking economic analysis and applying it to issues of gender equity. But it turns out that doing this is not as simple as taking pre-given theories and applying them. We have to actually adjust a lot of what is happening in the theories before we can use them for our analysis. So in order to do that, we first have to have a good basis for thinking about how numbers work and how they get adapted. One reason we need to do this is because culturally, numbers carry a certain weight. Let me give you an example. If I said to you, eh, about a third of this class is not doing well. Supposing instead I said to you, my data shows 33.32 of this class plus minus 2%. 33.32 of this class plus minus 2% are not doing well. What exactly does 33.32 plus minus 2% mean? It means 33.32 plus 2% would be 35.32, minus 2% would be 31.32. So between 31 and 35% of this class, roughly one third. That's literally what I mean, about one third. Don't I sound so much smarter and better and sure and perfect and absolutely correct when I say 33.32 plus minus 1-2%? But if I say, oh, well, one third, I kind of sound not so science not so smart, not so sure. Even though those two things mean exactly the same. So here is the question, which is actually a cultural question. Why exactly am I more likely to take something that is given to you in a numerical form as 33.32 and those two decimal points make it seem so sure, right? Even though the plus minus 2% means I'm not really sure compared to just saying one third. So part of what we face is we live in a culture which both hyper values numbers as correct, as objective, as pure. Now this doesn't mean numbers are not useful. We're going to come to that. Takes them on faith and also consequently trusts them too much. This is important. We both take them on faith and trust them too much, but we also view this as a language of experts. And one reason we trust them too much is we take them at face value and we don't really interrogate them. Now, how do you deal with the fact that numbers are actually created and have a role in society and they are given this level of respect? The answer is that you have to learn how to do numbers better. It's kind of like if you discover there is something called the novel and you don't like the novels that are being written in the 17th and 18th century because they don't reflect a diversity of lives, what do you do? You go out and you write your own novel. That's what you do, right? You have the rise of authors of different parts of the world, of authors of different races and ethnicities, genders. You learn about their voices. So you don't just say, well, it's just a story. Who cares? What you do is you figure out how to write a story. And for it to work, you have to learn how to write a good story, how to be a proper storyteller with a good use of an understanding of the world, a good use of how to tell a story, a good understanding of how a novel works, what an audience is, that's what you do. If you were in a literature class, that's what you did. You're not in a literature class, you're in an economics of gender class. So we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to do it with numbers. We're going to learn, not just that numbers are right or wrong, but how to create numbers, how to assess numbers, how to evaluate numbers, how to understand where they come from, and finally, make our own numbers. That's what we're going to do in this class. Everybody with me? So, your first reading is noticing numbers. 
Noticing numbers is an article that looks at the ways in which in our society we use numbers in the cultural way I talked about. And this matters. In particular, it gives you three case studies where you can see how the way we notice numbers doesn't just capture reality, it shapes and changes reality. How does it do it? It does it by shaping and changing our actions. So when I say numbers shape reality, I don't mean reality doesn't exist. Of course it exists. I mean that when I see a number, for example, my GPA, I use it as a signal. Oh, is that a high GPA? Should this student get admission to grad school? Is that a low GPA? Should this student go into remedial classes? Right? There is a vocabulary here. And when I see these numbers, it will shape all kinds of things. It will shape education policy. It will shape rules about whether you get student debt. It will shape stuff such as whether or not you will be provided with support services, whether or not you will get admission to the colleges of your choice, whether or not you can do this, whether or not you can do that. It will also change your own behavior. You will look at your GPA and you would be like, oh, I am not doing so well in this class. This is not my skill set. I should instead take this other major where I have better chances of doing well because that's what I'm good at. So you'll use these numbers, right, as a signaling mechanism, as a way to understand something about the world, and then it will change how the world treats you and it will change what you do in the world. So I want you to go through these three case studies in noticing numbers. You have to come into class. Before class, you will have a post you have to do, short little post, 300 words, where you want to talk about these case studies and tell me what you think their applicability is in the daily life that you face, what interests you. These are cases where in one case, noticing the numbers actually changes how people work on restaurants, for example, a rating versus a ranking. In another case, it actually changes an entire sport, the way in which people as gymnasts now perform compared to how they used to perform in the past because of the scoring system changing. And then finally, the third one is a failed case where people kept trying to use numbers, but they weren't able to do it in a way that bridged trust gaps so that the numbers, in fact, didn't do the work they wanted it to do. They didn't have the impact they wanted it to have because the indigenous community did not trust the environmental scientists when it came to figuring out how you're going to use all these numbers. Because in the past, we've been given numbers and what's happened has not been good. So I need to know how you will use this before I give you the data. So you can begin to see that if you think of numbers in this way, this becomes quite important for thinking about economics of gender because gender is an institution. And so when we do economics of gender, people always want to know how, you know, what does the numbers show? What does the data show? How are you going to use it? Is it going to result in this policy? Is it going to result in that policy? Are you going to make me change my behavior? What will happen? So we have to pay attention to that. That is the first pre-class post you have to do. I want you to read this article and come ready, after having done the syllabus, come ready with this pre-class post for class. This pre-class post will include one more item, which we're going to talk about next.